We are back with another review, and today we are checking out Doom, the board game, in honor of the release of Doom Eternal. Uh, it's coming out, particularly I'm going to be stoked for the Switch version of it, but today we got the board game here, brought to you by uh, Fantasy Flight, and it was designed by Kevin Wilson, so uh, also collab with id um, as well. So without further ado, let's hop right into the review and check out what we got here. So, um, initially the box art, we got the Doom 3 style box art and font. Uh, we got the Hell Knight on the front with a bunch of pentagrams and different type of runes in the background. And on the sides, we got the uh, Doom guy and we got another Hell Knight. And basically it goes like that all the way around. Let's check out the back here. So this is actually the game itself. Um, laid out basically with the figures in place and we have some rooms here some of the hallways um, revealed and built we got some of the doors you can see here illustrated um, some of the item drops we got the dice uh, pictured in regards to um, how it interacts with the gameplay and then we have uh, cyber demon which is actually these are the full size scale shown here so this is the uh, cyber demon and then we have the um, Doom Marine right there. So, um, but yeah, uh, Fantasy Flight, they actually do pretty good with um, board games and the games that they bring about. So let's check, with, let's check out what's in the box. Let's go. So we've got the instruction manual. We have the uh, campaign guide. And we'll go through all these and we'll check out what's what. But uh, let's just pull out the raw bulk pieces and check out exactly what we got. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of lay out the figurines and the bags and everything that we got. And then we'll see what we got here. We'll go through each figure. But um, they basically got them done out in Three colors here but they got some of these have like like the cyber demon has two parts to him and then like the red one same thing two parts you get that cyber demon figure right there pretty cool um, it'd be nice to look at these in depth and we'll we'll pull them all out but um, got to get these out of the box Where's the, there's the torso for that. There's the blue one. So that's the blue cyber demon. We got the smaller pieces, the pinkies. Um, we got the man, man cubi are um, already here. But uh, we got like the smaller demons like the imps, um, the spiders and stuff. And the shotgunners and the zombies and stuff. Those are in these bags right here. We got the battle combat dice and the move dice. We got our cards here, access cards on the bottom. Those are going to be your um, cards to get in the rooms. And then we have our Doom cards here. We got some health pack tokens. We got some ammo tokens right there. We have some weapons, armor, tokens right there and then we got some obstacles and some greats uh, for the game board we have some uh, air vents here some berserker tokens looks like and some action tokens and some health packs which is pretty cool and then we got the parts to the board which um, I have these separated out because these are the smaller pieces uh, that we have but in large we're gonna have um, basically I have these bunched out but these are like the the elbows you know like larger elbows and then you can see these are like this is like a four-way for an intersection you got like another four-way there different type of four-way um, you got like the T-bar intersection right there, and then these are some extension hallways. You got a little bit longer hallway right there, 
And then we got like um, one of the main, like one of the main or main rooms is going to be like one of these large four-way uh, square uh, rooms where the hallways will peek into, and then we'll pull some of the main larger rooms out, which have basically uh, one entry or two or three um, into them. And then you got like a T-bar three-way larger one. And then we have like the cyber demon room where you're gonna obviously fight the cyber demon because it's gonna need a little bit of a larger space as you can see. Um, the cyber demon takes up four spaces. So uh, the one creature itself uh, and you navigating and moving throughout the room, you're definitely gonna need um, the adequate space to at least battle it. So that's why they have a huge the huge square tile there. And then we got some information reference cards for the players to let you know uh, the hit points of each one of the uh, demons and what the uh, different tokens are that you pick up. And then there's those. And then we got the doors, which um, the doors come in a few different fashions. What I find is interesting is, like, uh, check this out. So each door no matter what kind of key card it takes so this is a blue blue door it says blue on the door but it has a blue key card you got blue here and then you got a yellow key card so um, that's not the red key card one but uh, it still says blue on it I don't know why they did that but you got doors like that and then you have like doors like this that are just plain doors that have no directive on there and then you have like um, I don't know if it's like the exit room door, but again, these are all style, stylized after the Doom 3, the Doom 3 um, graphics. So, and then, yeah, you get a bunch of doors like that, and then lastly in the box, you have your little um, item bank or inventory cards where you basically place the tokens that you collect, um, and then you have your different ones. You got one for each player here, you got three players, so... Um, one for each player. So this basically, in a nutshell, is um, Doom the game. Now we could set up a little bit of a, a sample um, board after we kind of go through some of the manuals and check it out a little bit. But um, at first uh, first glance, it's a pretty overwhelming game. It is it is a bit pricey if you're looking to get into this game. You're looking to at least spend a hundred bucks just on the board game uh, itself. So. They actually have a newer rendition of this game, which incorporates more of the newer Doom um, 2016 type of artwork and um, figurine styles. So again, the figurines are also modeled after the Doom 3 um, caricatures. So we're going to go through the instruction manual first, and then we'll check out the uh, campaign guide here. So uh, basically, we have a nice introduction here, which explains the creatures that we have involved here. We have zombies, imps, we have trites, which are like the spider creatures. We have the pinky demons, or in here they're just calling them demons. We have the hell knight, we have the archvile, the, the mancubus, and then the cyber demon. So pretty straightforward, basically all the characters from um, Doom 3. And then uh, weapon-wise, we got the pistol, the machine gun, the chainsaw, the fist, the shotgun, the grenade, the chain gun, the rocket launcher, we got the plasma gun, and of course the VFG. So again, all these are stylized after the weapons from Doom 3 as well. And then uh, we have a little bit of a explanation here to the reference sheet, the components, the contents that are included with the game. Um, this basically explains uh, you know, the marines, the invaders, the map pieces, basically each one of um, the contents of what you got is explained here. Um, how to punch, even how to punch out everything. So it's pretty cool, at least they explain some of that. Even though this is a, a bit of a higher level game in regards to the imagination that goes into it and the type of ingenuity that went into the design of this, um, it's still nice that they still explain all the small in intricacies for everybody to um, be able to basically navigate this without breaking the pieces. Because that's the, one of the worst things is you spend $100 on a game and you got cardboard pieces that are all torn up and broken or have like frayed ends or the paper is lifted off them. So anyway, this gives you a little bit of a 
um, way to kind of disperse out a four player setup for scenario one which basically yes you have three players you have the three colors but you also have somebody who could play as um, the demons or the invader player so um, that's something that you get to navigate as well and then you have usually the three players will start together right there which as you can see um, they all start together in whatever scenario and we'll go through that in a after we finish again going through here so they got uh, spawning examples on how to actually lay out the board um, and all the movements and the attacks uh, attack formations how you can basically get double downed by um, enemies and get attacked from multiple angles there's grenades um, so yeah it's definitely definitely a very very cool game and probably as close as you can get to the um, experience of everything. And then we have the further explanation here of all the tokens, which we showed earlier. There are teleporters in um, this game. Let's go back to the beginning for one second, and let's check out the objective of the game. So, basically, um, there's, there's scenarios that go throughout the game here. So, You'll have, I'll show you in, the, in a second the, the scenario, the campaign book, but the objective of all the scenarios um, is to basically escape the demon-infested uh, section of the Mars base is going to be for the first one, which is going to be knee-deep in the dead. Um, to do so, they must find the red key token and fight their way to the red security door. The invader player tries to score a total of six marine kills or frags before the marines can escape the board. So basically you have the um, you know, protagonist antagonist situation going on amongst the players versus the players versus the game. So that's kind of neat too. I mean, you could do it the other way where you're having, you know, people hop in for that, but it is cool when you have four people though, because then you have, um, you know, one person that's basically manifesting the game. So, uh, but that's the, that's the objective of the actual board game is basically just to navigate through the scenarios that are outlined in this book. Um, so you get to the end and you've basically um, exhausted all the different types. Uh, I imagine you can create your own. So how they have it busted down here is there's leveling up. You can level level up your marines. Um, weapons can break. Um, the marine player must work harder to win. There's a lot of different um, factors. Also marine status lingers between scenarios. So things do carry over from one campaign to the next. So it's got a little bit of a Dungeon and Dragons type of um, navigating experience, or like a Hero Quest type of um, experience through the game. Now the first scenario that they have outlined here is going to follow the original campaigns that came in with the Doom um, original computer game. So we got Knee Deep in the Dead is going to be the first one, which is the first episode in the game. And um, basically, we have a mission briefing, which you're gonna which you're gonna read through as you go through everything um, with the start of the scenario, and then you're gonna read the scenario goals. Which in this one, um, you're gonna begin in the lounge. Uh, the room next door contains several weapons lockers where you can arm yourselves. The red security door is in the northeast corner of the sector, but you'll need to find someone or something with high enough security clearance to open it before you can get through the door into Sector 4. So basically for you to proceed through into the next scenario, you need to um, achieve these goals, which they basically just outlined for you. Is you're going to need to exit through the red door, but you're going to need to find a way to get through the red door. And those are going to be outlined here in the area descriptions, which basically has a narrative that is read um, throughout the course of the player's journey throughout the level where it'll run you through all the different areas, all the way up to Area 8, which is B, uh, when you fight, I believe, three Hell Knights they have outlined here, or they have, yeah, three Hell Knights. You got one, two, three. You got a uh, regular zombie right there. You got a pinky waiting for you right through the door. And then you have a mancubi right there in the middle between the three Hell Knights. You got an imp over here. So you got quite the formidable um, situation in the end room which is outlined here in area eight now 
we'll read the the end description but let's check out the dungeon first so you start here in this sealed room where you have some of the weapons that they were talking about which you can kind of see now you have the uh, different actual tiles outlined here now these are going to be the smaller ones you got the the four-way ones that we talked about some hallway hallway adjoining ones and these are going to be where you place the different types of doors that you have that are provided to you now also you have you place down your little tiles here which will allow you to know which ones um, are available and once you pick those up then you put those on your inventory card and then as you go through each area you have um, different you know obviously demons and uh, zombies and, and such to fight through the hallways um, it shows you exactly how it's laid out and where you can place the tokens throughout the game so you um, and your players can see where you've been and um, yeah and it basically has you navigate and traverse through different areas as you can see here you start here then you go to one two three then you venture to four and then I imagine you have to backtrack to go to five, then you go to six, seven, and then you cross over and backtrack across that corridor till you get to eight where you meet up with the formidable uh, three Hell Knights. So, um, area eight says the door opens into a room dominated by a huge steel door on the east wall. Near it, a screen reads, lockdown in effect, red clearance required. However, the room is also filled with horrific creatures barring your way. If the Marines escape this sector successfully, you climb over the smoking carcasses of the creatures and use the security key to exit Sector 5. Make your, making your way to Sector 4, somehow you know that things are going to get worse before they get better. So it basically gives you this um, primer for the, the next scenario, but also gives you the conclusion to this one. So like if you and your friends wanted to end right now and cut it off and return, that's basically a good stopping point for everything. And then the second one we got is the Shores of Hell, which is the second one in Doom as well. So, And this map's a little bit more intricate. We do only have, I believe, what, seven areas here. So one less area, but it's a little bit larger and the corridors are a little bit more windy. So uh, again, same laid out. Um, here we have a, a pickup here from the previous scenario. It says once you've played scenario one, Knee Deep in the Dead, at least once you are ready to move on to this scenario. Remember that if all possible to play the five scenarios in this guide as one continuous campaign. For information on how to do so, just read campaign play on the cover of this guide, which is gonna be right here in the top corner, campaign play. And this is gonna to explain to you all those things that I was talking about in the beginning where weapons can break over time, status lingers between scenarios, marine players must work harder to win, Marines can level up, so basically you can gain those experience points to become stronger as you navigate through the campaign um, as a whole. So again, we have it laid out um, through the narrative right here where it has the blurbs. And again, we'll read through the, um, the end part where it talks about the actual end scenario. And then we'll check out exactly what's going on here in the Shores of Hell map. So they got us starting off at the top here where we have some uh, berserker tokens. We have a pinky in the room with us with a couple zombies, some armor, two pinkies in the room to the left of us. There's a door there. And then we have some uh, nice pickups. Then we got this nice little hallway here, which has some tuckaways with some items in them, of course. Area three looks like it's a solitary room that's isolated by itself. Um, and it's got a couple bad guys in there and some good pickups, which then we're going to navigate across area two to area four here, where we got two mancubi, we got a hell knight, and some pickups. It looks like we also have um, some BFG right here. We got a BFG icon there, which is going to be in the corner, which is awesome. We got some obstacles. We got a couple more hell knights here, three of them, which is going to navigate from five back through four. So we get to area six where we got another hell knight of course um but from there uh i imagine we're going to take the teleporter that's probably going to open up here in area five which is going to navigate us here to area seven where we got right off the bat four zombos we got four imps we got a hell knight and a cyber demon so that's the cyber demon right there 
Now, once you take all these out and you progress forward towards the cyber demon to exit to the X door, you're going to have a lot more space, but you also have these two obstacles here on the opposite side of the room. So you can tell that the difficulty is getting a little bit more um, intricate. And in regards to its, um, the way that they're kind of building upon the end scenario being the probably the most intricate. But we also have um, a little area down here called the vault, which I imagine is inside one of these, uh, maybe the floor grates that are on the floor here. There's tons of floor grates in this level. So um, here we go, the vault. This event can take place uh, even if the Marines are in another area when its conditions are met, always trigger this event as soon as the following statements are true. The Marines must have the code from Area 1 and the control from Area 4, and Area 3 is revealed. So, there, that explains that. So, lastly, we got the Area 7, uh, where it explains, Do not place the Hell Knight, the Cyber Demon, or the, and the Red Security Door on the board until the Marines enter one of the four spaces marked with an X. So basically, you don't even see this situation back here until you kill uh, through these zombies and demons, and then you get to this point. So as soon as you get there, that's when you basically drop them. So it's kind of like the uh, dramatic, the dramatic pop in from the Cyber Demon and the Hell Knight. So um, when you place the Hell Knight and the Cyber Demon and the Red Security are on the board, emerging from the cloud of steam, you find yourself in a large room with several pools. A vicious green fluid nearby, however, your attention is quickly captured by the enormous creature at the far end of the room. The monstrous thing eclipses even the Hell Knight that stands before you. This must be the Cyber Demon referred to in the security report. But beyond the Cyber Demon lies your escape into Sector 3, the security door. You, st you stare at a moment at the hideous Cyber Demon's course and chills run down your spine. Who knows what other horrors still lie ahead of you? Taking a deep breath, you open the door to Sector 3 and step through. You can't give up now, not after coming so far. So yeah, it's pretty much a huge narrative that goes through that. And then we got Inferno, which runs through nearly the same uh, scenario where you're basically, again, navigating. You're starting here and navigating through this entire maze. The bosses just get a little bit harder I guess or let's just say the demons get a little harder because you got like three mancubi over here two hell knights they just the way they stack up the enemies you got the cyber demon again now mancubis you got hell knights the way they stack up the um the demons it just gets a little bit more um I guess more difficult to navigate we got inferno is going to be the third scenario so let's move on to the fourth one which is going to be thy flesh consume and that flesh consumes going to be you're going to start here and you're going to navigate uh, basically through these areas until you get to area nine, which you are going to fight the cyber demon in a very enclosed space. So there you go. It's basically going to take up the entire end of that hallway, and you're going to have to be forced to fight it. So that's pretty cool. And that's that flesh consume. And then we got the last one, which is and hell followed. So. This one, you're going to start all the way up here, and you're going to navigate through this entire board. And then you're going to come all the way down over here to 3, navigate to 4, navigate to 5, 6. And in area 6, you're actually going to have to deal with some pretty intense... Um, we got Hell Knights in the room before, and then you're going to hit 3 Cyber Demons up. That's crazy. So you're going to hit up all these Mancubi throughout this whole entire area you got mancubi down here hell knights and then hell knights in here more mancubi and then you're going to finish it off with three cyber demons so you're going to hit all three of each color one of each color um and then basically uh you know not to spoil this up but uh, let's check out the area six finale before we wrap up this video so, uh, Area 6, you open the door to the shuttle bay in anticipation, ready to be free of this horrible place. Your dreams are turned to ashes with just one look around the newly renovated rele area. The shuttles are wrecked, torn apart by the Cyber Demon's powerful claws. There will be no escape from this place. Worse, on the far side of the room, you see another portal, like the one you destroyed in Sector 3. 
It leads down to the horrible realm of nightmare. It appears that the demons can make their own portals, and now the mankind has their attention, they intend to destroy us all. Still, you've got one last thing to do before you die. If you're going down, there are so many monsters that destroy the shuttles. So, if all invaders are are dead, basically, this is going to be that scenario for that. The one I just read is going to be the entrance to Area 6, which is basically the end of the game. So, if all invaders are dead in this area, which is going to be right here, the last of the invaders fall to the ground at your feet, but curiosity, the gateway into their dimension remains open. You stare numbly at the wrecked shuttles for a long time and then turn upwards towards the portal, reloading your gun. If it's a war these things want, it's a war they'll get. Even if even if you walk even if you have to walk into the depths of hell itself to carry on the fight. It's time to show these demons what Marines are made of to be continued. So basically it allows you to have some kind of a continuation onto something else if they're going to build it. They actually um, didn't build a sequel to this particular um, version. They ended up didn't doing a follow-up with the newer one. I wanted to see if it had some kind of date in here, but there isn't any type of date in here. Let's see what we got on the back of the box. Back of the box, okay, so we got 2004 here. So the newest one, I believe, came out in like 2015 or 2016. But, um, yeah, so let's check out some of the, the actual figurines. Um, you've already seen most of the game board pieces here. But uh, let's check out some of the figurines. Let's do... Uh, probably the green ones would be the easiest to see with the lighting. So let's just start pulling them up and we'll see here we got the pinky. There's the pink demon right there. Pretty gnarly. We got the zombie. Little zombie figurine. Really cool. These look these reminded me and look like uh little Warhammer figures, which is cool. We got the imp. Little spider. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see what else we got. That's Archvile. Pretty sick. They did some pretty good craftsmanship with the uh, the original molds of. And let's see here. We got. There we go. We got the shotgunner. Pretty cool, huh? And let's see what we got here. This is zombie. Yeah, so that's pretty much all the different types of figures. You got another imp right there. For the smaller ones, let's check out some of the larger ones. So we got the Hell Knight there. That's the that's the Hell Knight right there. Pretty gnarly looking. They actually really make its eyes more predominant in these figures than they do on the actual front of the game. Um, it almost looks like it doesn't have any eyes, these little recesses right there. So, that's the Hell Knight. We got the Mancubi right there. Again, these are all inspired through the 2004 uh, time period, which was the release of Doom 3. So there's the Mancubi right there. More Mancubi, Hell Knights, and this is the Cyber Demon. It's got these huge horns. It's got this breathing apparatus. And um, pretty sturdy. It does have a little, little looseness to it in regards to that. I imagine you probably shouldn't have an, a need to take this apart, but I mean, I do like the fact that you could take it apart. Um, it's easier to store it in the box. Got the hooves. So yeah, this guy takes out four spaces on the board. Pretty gnarly. Um, and again, repeats again for the um, blue. So, but you got the, there's your guy right there. So yeah, pretty cool. Let's check out some of the cards and then we'll look at the dice and then 
that'll be it for this review for sure but i wanted to share this with you guys especially because the release coming up of doom eternal so these have a uac access um on the back but on the front here these are like uac cards you got medic sniper killer instinct scout these are these are all um, abilities for your uh, players to basically progress forward and level up. Then we got the actual cards here, which was um, surprise attack, ambush, dodge, um, not quite surprise attack, dodge, mancubi has basically all the different actions on the cards here. Dark energies, hmm. darkness. Play play at the start of your turn until the start of your next turn. Marines cannot trace uh, line of sight farther than four spaces away. See, I mean the the depth that they went through in regards to the creation of this is really epic. Um, definitely raises the bar in regards to the way games should be played um, and board games should be designed. Just a little bit more beyond the basic. So we got the red dice here. We have the bullets. We have the counts on there. Yellow. Same thing. Bolt counts. Same thing on the blue dice. And the green dice, obviously. Are playing. So Pretty cool. Um, I really like this game. I thought it was uh, pretty neat. It would be definitely cool to get four people together to, to play the four way on this uh, and experience what it's like to actually have the large labyrinth of everything laid out. And I mean, just the way that the board pieces go together. I mean, let's snap these in and check this out and see. I'll show you exactly um, how sturdy that is. I mean, it, I like the inter, the interlocking ability of it. You're moving your characters across the board here. It's not going to be um, lifting up on you, and that's what I like about it. The interlocking boards, they definitely took the um, time. I mean, it didn't even break off easily. They took the time to make sure that the quality was, was there for you to be able to interchange this and interchange the entire board to create um, the atmosphere over and over again with ease without having to worry about everything everything getting broken and uh, even the even the doors stand up pretty well on top of the board um, also so I think that's pretty neat too and it gives that 3d aspect having the, the creatures really gives it the 3d aspect it's probably the one missing element that I didn't like as a, a youngster playing Dungeon Dragons a lot of it was left up to not so much the imagination but and as a kid you have a very good imagination but having the figures and the and the actual actions out visually, it definitely helps the experience become more immersive. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And if you like the Doom board game, let us know in the comments below. What do you like about the board game? Are you excited to play Doom Eternal? Let us know in the comments below as well. Everyone else, have a great rest of your day.